sit stop and think about the things he's done for me, you guys, I, I just I break down. I, I break down. He does it again and again and again and again. And I just thank God for blessing me and keeping me and protecting me. I thought I was a cool dude. I thought that I was a player player. I thought I was a dog. I thought all kind of, I had, I had identity theft, you guys. I thought I was going to be just like my daddy, because that's all I what they told me. You're going to be just like your daddy. You're going to look like him. I'm about his height. We laugh a lot. But um, my daddy was a dog. My daddy had a girlfriend in the first front seat. And so I go into the kitchen, I hear all the women say, you're going to be just like your daddy. You're going to be just like your daddy. And I go in the living room and put all women, all men and dogs, all men and dogs. I'm like 13, 14, I got hair, I got, you know, I'm growing, my voice is changing a little bit. And I go over there, all in the dogs, all in the dogs. So I think I'm becoming a man, so roof, a roof, a roof. I guess I'm supposed to be a dog, because that's what women say, all men are dogs. And then my mother said, my daddy's a dog, and then everybody said, you want to be just like your daddy, and my daddy is a dog, because he got the girl in the front, and he got, and it was identity theft, you guys. I was a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's who I was. Amen. Amen. I was too high to know it. I was too drunk to know it. I was too part of the women to know it. I was distracted. I wasn't in my right mind, so I didn't know who I was. And so I followed my friends, and I followed my family members, and I followed my homies, and I followed them. And all of you guys was distracting me. On April 8, 2003, I was managing a restaurant, a pizza hut restaurant right there in Long Beach on Atlantic and Delano. On April 8, 2003, I was taking a deposit to the bank, and when I got down to the corner, two brothers pulled a burgundy van in front of my car and drew down on me with nine millimeters. Stuck the gun to my head. I said, man, come on, man, come on. I said, get it up, get it up. All right, you got it, man, go ahead. Take it. And after he took the deposit, brother, he kept the gun on my head. I want to kill you. I want to kill you. I said, man, just go, man. You already got the I want to kill you. And the spirit's like, come on, man, let's go. Somebody was praying for me. Somebody was interceding for me. Somebody's grandmama was on their knees praying for me, but he could have pulled that trigger. I come back to work the next day, and I came back, and my boss is in there. She's crying. I said, what's going on? She said, I'm sorry. I got to let you go. I said, I got, you lost some deposit last day. I got to let you go. I said, I just had a gun put to my head. You guys want to fire me? And I'm all upset and everything, and I'm trying to get their paperwork and stuff out of my car. And in the confusion of all of it, I accidentally popped my hood. And so when I drove away after being fired on the 17 freeway, 65 miles an hour, bam! Hood goes through the windshield, so bam, bam! Totaled out the car right there on the side against those barrels and everything. Gun to my head, lost my job in a car accident all the 24 hours. You guys, that was too much. That was too much. I sat on this and I thought, no man was supposed to get this piece of No man was supposed to get this piece And the Holy Ghost came in that car like a flood and gave me such a peace. I was so okay. I go down to Shoreline Beach, brother, in Long Beach. I'm sitting on the rocks, and I'm asking God, what was that all about? Gun to my head, lost my job, car accident. This old white man, he was dirty. He looked like a bum. I didn't want to speak to him because I didn't want him to ask me for no money. He walked up to me and said, I don't mean to get in your face or invade your space to get on your case. The Lord told me, come tell you. You got a message you must get through. You need to get your life in order. Carry around a pad and pen and tape of order. He just kept on rhyming to me, brother, telling me about my life. Put my hands up in the air, brother, and yield it to the Lord. Amen. Amen. He said, footprints in the sand when he walked away, brother. I know there was a, I know there was an angel. I know it was. And I think that's why I come downtown Skid Row because the one who changed my life looked like a bum. The one who changed my life was dirty and old and just he don't want to change my life. And so now I gotta go back to the streets and say, let my people go. Drugs, alcohol. Homelessness, let my people go. I was saved so I could go back and save somebody else. I was saved so I could go back and save somebody else. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. So, but he blessed me with the opportunity to go out and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ through RAP, Radical and Money Preaching. I ministered the gospel of Christ through rap, and I live this thing. You could take the music away, brother, and I got something to say for about five hours because I live this thing. While I thought I was practicing, brother, I was actually ministering to myself. And then I had to change from the inside. I had to be in the spirit and in truth so he could anoint it as opposed to a performance. I don't care what y'all think, brother. All I know is what God did for me, and I'm just here to tell my story. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory.
And so that's why we say, let those who have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Father God, open the eyes of our understanding that we may be able to see, Father God, what you have for us and what you have in store for us. All the rest of that stuff, guys, is a lie. All that other stuff is a lie. The drugs is a lie. The women are a lie. Drug, alcohol, men, you know, anything distracting you is a lie. Amen. You were born for purpose. That's why you're here tonight. You ain't here by accident. Amen. accident. Amen. And yeah, you're going to get some food too, and you're going to get some clothes, but you're going to get this word. Amen. Amen. When John said, go ask Jesus, is he the one, or should we be looking for another one? He said, go tell John, the lame see, the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, but the poor have the gospel preached to them. Now you would think that the poor get money. No, the poor have gospel preached to them, because that's what they need. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is the reason, you guys. Yes, he is. Jesus yes, is the reason. Thank you, Lord. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm wise and I realize, open my eyes and have to be chastised. 
because it had some good positive things in it. I had to find myself, I had to sober up enough so that I could get the word down in me. I mean, I remember trying to quit and trying to quit and trying to quit, and I quit for my birthday, and I quit for New Year's, and I quit for my mother's birthday and Mother's Day, and then I quit again, and then I quit quit, and then I quit again, and I tried to say, okay, just a little bit, and then I'm back on it again. Oh yeah, I'm, on, I'm gone. I'm gone, I'm robbing, I'm stealing, I'm breaking in my neighbors, I'm doing all kind of crazy stuff, brother. And but, but the mercy of God kept me. How many people know that it was God that kept you in the midst of your mess? Amen? How many people know it was God that kept you? Amen? People that did half of what we did ain't even here no more. They're gone and dead or they're in jail. God has given us another opportunity, person. You stick out to me. God has given us another opportunity. God has given us another chance, you guys. Amen? So let's not take it for granted, you guys. This is the day of salvation. Today is the day to make the decision. Today is the day to go sober. One day, 
Because you got to do one at a time, you guys. And then somebody's going to come bring something to you. Somebody's going to try to offer it to you. Somebody, looking like a friend, is going to let the enemy use them to offer you to get back on it again. Amen? You have to be strong and make a decision today. Choose this day who you're going to serve. Life or death, blessings of person. Choose this day, you guys. Make a choice. It's not even a feeling. It's a decision. Amen? Amen. I had to forgive some people that hurt me bad, brother. I had to forgive some people that hurt me bad. I had to forgive some people that let it go. And when I found out, brother, the forgiveness wasn't really for them. It was for me. It was for me so that I could be okay. Amen? Amen. Whatever you have to do, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you guys go ahead and forgive those people. Forgive that person. Forgive those people that are close to you. Forgive them. You got to let it go, you guys. You got to let it go. Thank you, Lord. So this is a word of God coming out of my mouth. So I had to stop cussing. So I had to put the word in my mouth. Amen. I had to stop talking negative. So I had to put the word in my mouth. And lately that's been, you know, hard to do because, you know, it's just been hard to do. It's been hot. And I catch myself saying, it's hot. It's hot. It's so hot. It's hot. And the Lord said, it's hotter in Africa. It's hotter in Las Vegas. It's hotter in Bakersfield. It's hotter in some places where they have no shelter, no home, no air conditioning, no water, no nothing. So stop saying that, Second James. And I said, yes, Lord. Stop murmuring and complaining, remain the same. You build wilderness walker for 40 years until you die off. Amen. You want to go to the promised land? You better have an attitude of gratitude. In all things, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Amen. Let's give thanks for whatever we have, you guys. Give thanks. Whatever you have, give thanks. Shoes, socks, food, shelter, whatever you have, give thanks. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God is coming out of my mouth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to say goodbye to the complaining, gossiping, backbiting, and telling everybody with the devil to the people. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, except to the good of the years of the edifying, that it may finish the grace unto the hearers. So this Friday forward, we are going to tell the devil what is meant in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm at the top, not the bottom, head, not the tail. I know that Jesus is after me. I ain't going to hell to the devil's key. I'm going to put knees. I don't have to be a victim. I got a bit to me. He said, bless the Lord here. Bless the Lord. I bless you in the field. Bless you in the house. That's why I speak to the house of the word. I never got to the word. I'm going to tell every one of y'all about the word. Because heaven and earth will pass away. The word of God is here to say. Spend all day in the word. You should stay in the word. Obey in the word. You say in the word. And when you pray, you should pray in the word. Because the word is God's will. That will be done. I keep the come on earth as it is in heaven. The songs that you sing, the light will be in the power of the Lord.
And, and I remember losing my memory one time. I was on my way to my mother's house. And I, somehow I knew I passed my mama's house. And I called my mom and said, Mama, which street do I get off on? She said, what are you talking about? I said, I'm on Bolsa. Where do I go? She said, Bolsa, you passed it already. I said, Mama, just tell me which street to get off on. And I got to my mother's house. And they said I was laid up in her house for 30 days. I can't remember that. But I, I remember when I got out, brother, I saw my cousin. And she was like nine months pregnant. I said, I don't remember you getting pregnant. She said, you was in my wedding two weeks ago. So I don't remember. So there's a three to seven year, um, uh, three to seven uh, uh, space in my life, three years. I can't remember. I see people and I know I know you, I just can't remember where I know you from. And so it's really weird for me because I did so much bad to people that I don't know if you wanted the bad ones or the good ones. And so I got to be cautious with some people I, you know, I see. But the doctor said I was about to have a nervous breakdown because I wasn't sleeping and then I wasn't going to bed, I wasn't resting. And so he's about to lay me down. If you won't lay, uh, sit yourself down, the body will lay you down to preserve itself. Amen? So there's a, a three to seven year period I can't remember anything, but that's okay. Because as far as I'm concerned, I figured God was just deleting some of that extra stuff that I didn't need. Amen. And making some room in my gigabytes so I could download some good stuff in there. Put the word in there and some scriptures in there and memorize that kind of stuff. Amen. I didn't need to keep that other stuff. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a virus. It was a virus. Amen. So now I'm downloading the good stuff. I'm downloading the good news. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes in First to the Jew and the Greek. I remember those scriptures, brother. Amen. I can't remember the house I grew up in, but I remember those scriptures. You know what I'm saying? And so I know that it was God that restored me. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove the good and perfect and acceptable will of God is. I had to get my mind renewed, you guys. I say, I now, I say all the time, I never say, because some people say, you know, I can't remember anything. I'm saying, you know how it is when you get old? I don't say that kind of stuff. I say, thank you, I have the mind of Christ. Thank you, I have an excellent memory. Thank you, I'm getting renewed on daily basis. Amen? I stay new, but I let other people, old people get old. I ain't getting old. I'm going to stay young because I got too much work to do. I got too much work to do, so I don't even speak like that. But I thank God for the opportunity. I thank God for just blessing me and go over a few scriptures. I got five more minutes. And then I'm going to go over a couple of scriptures with you guys, and we're going to get the food going and, and get you out of here. Thank you, Lord. And anybody got numbers? Did everybody not get a number? Anybody got not get a number? Yes. 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 get a number. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And so, as we continue to do this, 
And like I said, you guys are going to always have whatever distractions, but you're not to be distracted because God is going to do what he's came here to do. Amen. And so we continue to be that and, and, and stay focused on the message at hand. And that's why I said, let those who have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And then everybody else who tries to take it in naturally and it's just bouncing off, is this is foolishness to them. But you, you know. You already know. You, you know. You guys, some of this stuff is hitting you guys, and I'm just reaffirming what you already know. Amen. I'm just, I'm not even planting the seed with you. I'm, I'm watering the seed, because you already know. Amen. And so we thank God for the harvest. Some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. What's up, man? God, how you doing? And so we just thank God for the opportunity to come out and plant. So thank God for the opportunity to come out and water. Oh, that's what I was saying. And so I'm hearing all these people out there, you guys, in the world, saying, that's, the, that's a shame. They don't feed those people out there. They don't give them a home. They don't give them no place. They don't do nothing there. And I said, I go every second Friday. You want to go? Oh, I'm, I'm busy on that day. I, I got something to do. I got just, you know, I just, you know, I'm just saying it's a shame how it happened. But we pray for them and they don't come out. And so, but I found some people that be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving yourself. I saw this woman of God that let her light so shine that men and women will see her good works which glorifies God in heaven. I see this woman coming two hour ride up, two hour ride back, bringing all the food, bringing everything here, ministering to you guys, singing to you guys, and bringing the food for how many years? 14 years. For 14 years. That's what I can do. Amen. I'm not a, a I'm not a keeper of an aquarium. I'm a fish for men. And I gotta go out and get some more. Go out and get some more. Go out and get some more. Sit in the four walls of the church, brother. I really got them and nobody come up for prayer. I can't do that no more. That's not why I was saved. That's not why I was delivered. Amen. I would say to come out and tell somebody else what they must do to be saved. That God can help you. That God has kept you. And you know God kept you. And it's time, you guys, to make that decision. To make that change. To take full responsibility for your own thoughts, your own actions. And make the change. Amen? Amen. So hang around good people. That's what I do. Hang around positive people. And this lady at my job, she saw what I do. She came down and she's been here ever since. And she brought her friend and she comes down and helps. Amen? You guys, give all these helpers a hand, please. Give them a hand. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. So we pray for the labors of the harvest. We thank God that we take our time after work, an 11 hour day, brother. I got to come. I got to come. I can't not come. I, I can't not come. I might go back and hit something if I don't come. If I don't do what I'm created to do, I might go do something imposters do and then go hit it again, or go hit it again, or go hit it again, go, go hit it again. I might go do something wrong I ain't supposed to be doing. But when I stay busy doing God's work, when I stay around positive, inspirational, encouraging people, you guys, I'm, there's safety in that. There's safety in this. There's safety in godly counsel. Amen? Amen? So we thank God that you guys came out. Thank you for allowing me to share the word. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Amen. Second James. Father, I would just thank you for the word. Thank you for the people that heard the word. We thank you for all that we're saying and doing, Father God. We give you praise, honor, glory. Thank you for the woman of God. Let me co-labor with her. Thank you for my, my, my partner in Christ. Thank you for my sister in Christ. Thank you for covering and keeping her. Thank you for protecting her, Father God, as she's on the highways and byways. Thank you for traveling and graces, Father. We don't take that for granted at all, Father God. We thank you for covering and keeping her. You are the airbag. You are the bumper, Father God. You are the gas mileage, Father. You are all of that, Father God. Thank you for providing everything she needs according to her riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that you're Jehovah Jireh. The Lord that provides everything we need, Father God. We thank you for keeping her and protecting her and saving her. Thank she's healthy, she's healed, she's whole from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We thank you that you were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and chastised when our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we are healed. And so we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.